I'm Beth Buckholtz, and I'm an assistant professor in the Reading Education and Special Education Department at Appalachian State University. My article in JLR is entitled, Authorizing a Playground Game. The arguing started once the rules were written down. This piece invites readers to grab a coat, double knot those laces, and walk or jog outside with the children from room three as they embark on their daily game of red versus gray. Previous work examining the making and remaking of children's playground games has largely focused on the role of oral transmission, but this article examines how a community of children collectively engaged in embodied and oral transmission alongside written transmission to co-author and transform a long-standing playground game called Red vs. Gray. At focus is the creation of the game's first rule book by one child who faced swift resistance from some members of the community, setting off a series of events unfolding across the playground, classroom, and home that forced children to consider a range of complex questions in relation to orality, textuality, history, tradition, and authorship, including who has the power to rewrite or remake a collectively authored, historically situated game. Using data from a four-year longitudinal ethnography, my research moves from a K-6 multi-age classroom to the playground and back again to examine how this game, played for nearly a decade in this community, was negotiated, contested, and sustained across time and space, with particular interest in the introduction of written texts. Mediated discourse analysis was leveraged to examine the game's historical nexus of practice, rooted and embodied in oral modes of transmission, and to understand how the nexus was transformed with the introduction of written transmission in the form of the first official rulebook. Findings suggest that written text did not supersede oral transmission, but instead prompted more talk as well as more writing. Significantly, making space for these negotiations created opportunities for writing to become significant to children as children, as they passionately and critically negotiated how to sustain their own collective brand of literacy. It is in learning to become a member of a sustained community of practice that children experience the power of written transmission as simultaneously coercive and productive, necessitating a critical eye and ongoing critical conversations as to how authors are ascribing and inscribing particular versions of histories, as well as possible futures, bodies, and identities. Mm -hmm.